This month's episode of Paranormal Heart is brought to you by Nodakian Studios. If you're looking for a beautiful piece of stoneware pottery, check out Nodakian Studios at etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Nodakian Studios. And also check her out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Nodakian Studios, where you can see updates on where she's going to be, as well as giveaways. Go check it out. Welcome to Paranormal Heart, a place where people can talk about their paranormal experiences. With your host, Cat Ward. Hey everyone, welcome back to Paranormal Heart, your monthly paranormal podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in again. As usual, you can find Boo and I at Podbean the last Sunday of the month at 6 p.m. Eastern, YouTube, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, RadioAndPodcast.com, as well as IamDarkWaters.com every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. If you haven't already, please show your love of the show and go to Podbean and click that follow button as well as YouTube, just hit like, share, and subscribe. Before I introduce my guest, I just wanted to apologize to you folks. I was having some technical difficulties with my mute button, and, well, I had some chest congestion the day that I recorded this and did a lot of throat clearing. Apparently, the mute button really wasn't working, and you'll be able to hear it throughout the episode. So I do apologize for that. Other than that, I have a great show for you. First, I'd like to dedicate this episode in memory of Lorraine Warren, who sadly passed away on March 18th. I think pretty much everyone in the paranormal community would say that her and her husband, Ed, were the pioneers of paranormal investigating. I mean, they've they've done so much over the years helping people with not just investigating, but handling demonic cases that most of us really wouldn't dare take. So thank you for all of you've done. Mrs. Warren, this one's for you. Now on to my guest. In episode 18, my guest talks about an interesting encounter he's had since a child. He's encountered the Hat Man on several occasions, and I'm very fortunate that he wanted to share this with us, since he's never really discussed it with too many people. He is co-host of a wonderful podcast called Cap'n and the Meerkat, where they discuss games from various platforms. Folks, you really need to check out that podcast. It's a very funny show that just came out in February of this year, they are informative about the games they discuss, and they have a great chemistry that will make you want to tune, to tune in every week. So please welcome Cap'n, also known as Scott Mayer. Hey, Scott. Welcome Hi. to Paranormal Heart. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. This is pretty exciting for me because, uh, as I said in the intro, you have your own podcast that I've been listening to, and uh, it's really exciting to have you here. Thank you. Um, and as I said in the intro, now that we're swapping swapping thanks. Um, yeah, I listened to you on a Friday um, at work and I, I really was looking for something that kind of appealed to my love of supernatural. So yeah, it's like it was an easy fix. And so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited to be here. Oh, thank you. So tell us about your, your encounters. Oh, my encounters. Well, <laughs> um, so you wanted to talk about the hat man, but yes. I, I had a or recent uh, encounter um, around January that like really? freaked me out. So I had a, I had a family, family cat and he, he had to be put down cause he was, he was ill. <laughs> and my sister told me it was going to happen around like, I think it was four thirty in England. So I'm sitting there and I'm at work and I just felt something bang across my, my ankle. And I was like, what was that? And I looked down, there was nothing there, but it just kept like rubbing up against my ankle. So I thought it was super weird. And I got like a little bit like 
teared up. So I went to the bathroom just to kind of like, you know, man, man up. <laughs> and, uh, and I text my sister and I was like, hey, you know, uh, tell, tell Sammy that, that I'm sorry I can't be there. And she said, um, she was like, he passed like 10 minutes ago. And I was like, oh, maybe it was a spiritual way of him saying goodbye. But that was like the, the most recent spooky thing. So have, is that the only time that you encountered your cat? Yeah, because he, he passed in, in January and <clears> now <throat> we're, in, we're in April. Yeah. But that was, that was the only real like experience since uh, my hat man stuff that I felt absolutely overcome as if, as if, yeah, it was a spirit, but the, but the hat man, which is, which is why, why we started uh, talking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I moved into this new house uh, with my parents uh, when I was like 17 and I had like a nice sized room and I was, was asleep one night and I just randomly woke up and I, my gaze was just drawn to this this doorway, and it was one of those where you suddenly feel almost submerged, like just with pressure. And standing in this doorway was this shadow, and I just remember thinking, "How can I see a shadow, considering it's nighttime? My room is pitch black, mm -hmm. yet I could still see uh, an outline." And all I could really make out at the time was it looked like he was holding a pocket watch and he had this, this top hat. And I, I was like, it just, Victorian just came to mind mm -hmm. and I, yeah, I just, I couldn't look away. And then next thing I know I'm awake and it's 10 AM in the morning. And I was just like, maybe it was a bad dream. Maybe you shouldn't eat cheese before going to bed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I thought nothing of it. I thought it was just a, a weird, weird thing. And a few months went by, and I remember I was I watched the Super Bowl um, in my living room, and then I went upstairs. So it was like four in the morning, and I'm just getting into bed, and then suddenly again, my gaze was drawn to the door, and the only way I can liken it when I was when I told her, my wife this was, you know, when you see a spider in your room <laughs> yeah, and then you just follow it everywhere. <laughs> yes. That that's how it was. And it was just like, I can't, can't look away. And again, uh, looked like there was a, something in his hand. And I just remember again, seeing the, the top hat and then it was gone. It almost backed into the, the door. And I was like, that was really weird. So the next day I'm talking to my mom and I'm like, look, you think I'm crazy, <laughs> but there's a guy and she was like, yeah, like the stands in my doorway and she's like, yeah, with a pocket watch, right? No. Yeah. And so we, we were just like, what? So we started like talking, maybe it was a, a family member, but we, we couldn't figure it out. So we just started referring to this thing as Dave. <laughs> so we've just like seen Dave recently <clears throat> and and I you know I didn't experience it for for a while longer but one night I, I was a little bit tipsy and uh I came home and we had a golden retriever and he slept in between all three rooms mm -hmm. so you'd come up the stairs and there'd be my sister's room on the right my parents on the left and mine would be in the middle and his name was Tiggs and he would just he would sleep there and then one night, I, for some reason, I had the door open. He came in and we were watching a movie, just chilling. And then, then he just scarpered off. And he, I could hear him like tapping around in other rooms. So I thought maybe someone was waking up. So I shut my door and I'm sitting on my bed to, to finish this movie. And boom, it's there again in my doorway. I'm just like, what the, what the fuck? Hmm. And, uh, oh, can I swear on this? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking in, the, in this, uh, this direction. And for some reason, I thought it would be a super wise idea, like, like in Ghostbusters, just to walk towards it. <laughs> and I, all I did was I stood up and it 
faded backwards. And then all I can hear is snarling. My mm-hmm. dog is tripping out. He's he was he never I'd never heard that that sound come from him before. Mm-hmm. And he was just going ape. And then I I open my door and I see him backing into my sister's room. And then I was and I remember trying to get him and like, you know, calm down. Then everyone woke up and then everyone just thought the dog was crazy. <laughs> and I sp- told my mom the next day, I'm like, yo, did, did you hear that? And she's like, yeah, what happened? And I, and I told her, and then we didn't see it for a while. And I moved out and, and then my sister came across it. She took my, my room and she, um, she came across it and she would never talk about it inside the house. We could talk about it in the garden or if we went for a walk, but we, she wouldn't talk about it in the house. So I think once she got on board with it, I was like, yep, this is real. I'm, we're, we're not crazy. There's three of us now. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but you had an experience. You, you were telling me once. Yeah, the, has, the hat man really fascinates me out of all the paranormal creatures because we, I grew up in this apartment building between the ages of 5 and 12 or 13, I can't remember. And it was mm-hmm. a three, three-story apartment building. Uh, we lived on the top floor, very, very old building. Before they converted it to electric heat, the furnace downstairs was heated by coal. So you know that's a really old building. Yeah. Creepy-ass apartment. And, of course, my room I always felt was the creepiest. And I had mm. this big walk-in closet. And I don't remember when I started seeing him, but, oh, how, t- how tall was your hat man? I... I remember saying to you that I, I believe he was around like six foot. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I hear normally. Mine was about four foot. And appar- oh. Yeah, apparently um, the hat man is normally tall. Uh, but there's a few of them, few encounters that are short, like the ones that I saw. Um, hmm. You know, like a brimmed hat. And I can't tell if he was wearing a cloak or if it was... Um, um, like a long trench coat, but it was something yeah. like I could never see his features and he would never pay attention to me, uh, which I was happy. I would never move. <laughs> I would have the covers up against my, you know, just below my eyes thinking, please don't see me. Please don't see me. <laughs> and he, he never really paid attention, but it would freak the hell out of me every time. And then my father told me we're standing in the big walk-in closet one night and uh, he says, you know, there's nothing here at night that isn't here in the daytime. And I looked at him with big eyes and said, you mean he's here in the daytime too? And I was f- afraid of the daytime. And he's like, damn, what have I done? <laughs> but um, Sounds like you got Hat Boy or, or Hat Man in training. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> mini Hat Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a mini me. <laughs> yeah, just, but there was one night that uh, I woke up and I had scratches on my arm Um that only happened the one time. So somebody said that they thought like a psychic that I met years later thought mm. perhaps that the hat man was there to protect me. So I, I mm. really don't know. And that's why he was just kind of like doing his rounds in my room. But to this day, my dad still says he remembers me saying about the man living in the closet. Damn. Yeah. But I, I never, never knew until years later that there were other people who, who were seeing this up from all over the world. And in fact, I was listening to one podcast called uh, Paratruth Radio, and they had a guest on there talking about the hat man. And I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. So I messaged them and said about my encounter. And um, he said, oh, you might want to watch this video. So he sends me this YouTube video. I'll, I'll send it to you. And hmm. um, uh, this man used to see the short version as well, and he did a reenactment. Scared the crap out of me because I'm, I'm thinking, that's the guy. That's exactly what I saw as a child. Yeah. So all these memories and feelings start flooding back going, holy crap. And then I started realizing that, no, there's actually a lot of people who have been having these encounters, but don't know who he is, why is there, you know, if there's a difference between the tall one and the short one, maybe it is Junior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the crazy thing, because I guess if you, if you experience the same thing in like the, the same building, mm-hmm. like a, just like a spirit, then, then you can be like, okay, it's just trapped to this one one place but yeah yeah i remember when you because you tweeted it you were you were like i'm um, doing a podcast about the hat man yeah and i was like jesus so <laughs> 
it it does it is elsewhere yes yeah it was i i um i had one last experience with with him and i remember i told <laughs> at the time i was i was dating uh, my wife if that makes sense yes um and um yeah and i remember telling her about it and she she wouldn't come over for a, for a few weeks it'd be <laughs> like well it's 10 o'clock i'm going now okay, okay. <laughs> makes sense but I, so I worked in, in hotels and, um, I did too at one point. Oh, did you ever like feel, did you ever have any weird stuff happen in hotels? Yes. And one of them that I worked in. Would you like to share? <laughs> I would. <laughs> um, I was a housekeeper and, um, the, the it was a three story, again, three stories. What's with the three, three story buildings with me? Uh, the first floor and the third floor are always the ones that had the most activity. You know, you'd be in the in the laundry area getting, you know, your linens. And mm. at the other end where you hadn't even been yet, something would fall off the shelf or whatever. Um, there was this one incident where I just finished making the bed and my supervisor came in and said, uh, hey, your bed's not done right. I'm like, what do you mean? A big handprint in the middle of the bed, right? And she goes you know, why did you put your handprint there? I'm like, I would have to move pretty fast in order to do that while you're standing at the other end of the room. What the hell? So I thought it was her, but no, we just kind of looked at each other and that was on the third floor. Uh, TVs would turn on by themselves when there's nobody, you know, no one in their rooms. Um, one of my housekeeper friends was uh, down the hall on the third floor. She was vacuuming one end of the, the room and um, on the table, they had a binder with, you know, what's going on in, in the in the town, what phone numbers you can dial and all that. And that went flying off the table. And I asked her, I said, well, cause she comes into my room all white. And I said, what's wrong? And she says, the, the, the book just kind of flew off the table. I said, well, you're vacuuming. Maybe the cord hit it. She goes, no, it was nowhere near it. And I'm like, all right. And we started to laugh and we started calling the, uh, the ghost Mary. So I mentioned it to the, um, to the, um, uh, hotel manager. And she says, you guys see them too. And I'm like, are you serious? She says, yeah, the night staff sees it. And, oh. you know, the night staff will be sitting at the desk and all of a sudden the, the doors will open up from outside as if someone came in and there was no one there. The elevator doors would open, close. It would go, the elevator would go up, then it would come back down and the doors would open. And the, the, the girls are just sitting at the desk going, okay, what was that? Or in the hallway, it was motion sensor and it's middle of the night. So, you know, no, no activity. And they'd be yeah. watching the cameras. And lights would be coming on in the halls. No, you're okay. I, I don't <laughs> want to work there. <laughs> that sounds horrible. No, I, I, a lot of people were afraid, but I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. <laughs> I remember I worked in, in, in one, one hotel. It was the, <clears throat> the one before I, I worked in another one. Then I, then I met the, the hat man again. But we had, we only had two floors because we weren't as nice as your hotel, apparently. <laughs> um, and I remember I was just walking down a corridor and I heard a door shut and I was like, that's weird. There's no one on this floor. Oh. And I remember just not walking and not running. There was something in between and I was just like jetting to the door. And I always likened it to uh, Ghostbusters. It was like the, <laughs> the one story I really enjoy telling. It's like, he's slimy, Ray. <laughs> funny. But <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm drinking out of my Ghostbusters mug, as you can see. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, I had one had one last uh, encounter with with uh, the hat guy, and that's why I was like adamant that he must be at six foot or around around that. So I was I just gotten home from from work. It was like one a.m. and I guess if you worked in hotels or, or that line of work, you'd understand as well that like you don't just go home and go to bed. You no. need to relax and let the day wash away. So I'm, I'm watching, watching Netflix um, and my cat's there. And yeah, we're just, I don't know. He, he was a weird one. He would sometimes get skittish and that means you had to open the door and let him go. But otherwise he would just chill and, and we, we'd, relax. So I was watching, yeah, I was watching Netflix and Sammy is wandering around my bed and then he bounced down to the door and started hissing. I was like, 
okay, I guess he wants to go out really badly. <laughs> so I let him out and he ran off. And I sat back down and my room was tiny. You could possibly fit two single beds and that would be it. Wow. So, yeah, um, which is why I now know why my sister jumped out of that room and took, took the bigger <laughs> one. Um, so, I'm, yeah, so I'm like maybe three or four feet away from my TV screen. And as, as I sit down, there's I, – I almost – I turn to, to my left – and I was almost looking at a belt buckle. It was like a waistline. And I started looking up and I, I saw the pocket watch. And I just remember saying out loud, Jesus, <clears throat> like, I have no idea what this thing is. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why I've seen it so many times. It's never been this close. And I continued looking up and I just saw the outline of two eyes. And they, they weren't, there was no color there. It was just, you could just see an outline. Mm -hmm. And I looked up a little bit more and there was the hat. And I must have sat there for what felt like an hour. And I know it was definitely longer than, than 15 minutes because the, the movie kept going. So I'm just staring into this shadow while some comedy is playing in the background. <laughs> and it was this surreal moment. And... I it was I remember not feeling afraid like I'm going to get hurt but I felt so uncomfortable um like I worked for Louis CK for example what? um and then uh yeah and then for some reason I just got into bed and it was still there and I just turned towards the wall <laughs> and just shut my eyes and hoped to fall asleep <laughs> And yeah, that was the last encounter, and it terrified me. How long ago was that encounter? Um, four, yeah, I'd say around four to four and a half years, because it was just before I, I moved to America. Hmm. After yeah. we uh, moved out of the apartment building, I never saw the hat man again. Oh, well, that's good, because <laughs> I don't want to see it again. <laughs> But do you think it's it's isolated to set buildings? I have no idea. Um, I have a friend who's doing research on it, and um, he's writing a book, and he wants to find out. He wants to get down to the nitty gritty and find out exactly who the Hat Man is. You know, what is he doing? What does he want? Um, so I'm really looking forward to having you know when he releases his book. But I really have yeah. no idea because at first I thought maybe it was just you know limited to the one building, but then. I've heard of other people like you that say they've seen it in in various places that they've lived. So I really have no idea. Yeah. And I remember thinking um, if it was just limited to that <clears throat> one room and then I thought when my mom said that she'd seen it, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's just those two rooms. Oh. It turns out it was all three bedrooms. And your parents have seen them too. Uh, just my mom, my dad, it, <laughs> there could be something, the devil could be standing in front of my father. And he won't see you. Yeah. He would just be like, Ugh, you're making a scene. <laughs> <laughs> you just go away. Um, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't acknowledge it. A creepy thing happened to him once. He, um, in the same place, the same yeah, in, in our, in our living room, mm -hmm. um, he, him and my mom were sitting there and it was, he said it was like mid, well, my mom said it was midday. My dad just brushed this off and all the lights came on and then they all turned off hmm. and he just kept playing on his, on his phone. <laughs> and my mom said, did you see that? And he went, yeah, it's my mom's birthday today. And she had passed when he was younger and he just nothing did. And I was like, how do you wow. connect lights coming on to it being your mother's birthday? I wonder if that's happened before. Yeah, and that's and, a conversation I'll never have with him. Oh, because he he just he wouldn't address it, and yeah, which is a shame. But maybe he's seen things, and that's why he just sort of dismissed it because he figures if I don't acknowledge it, maybe <clears throat> it's not real. Because so many people are like that. Yeah, that would <laughs> that, and that's a shame because I feel like with with spirits and because they're such unique. Um, moments mm -hmm. 
and and it you i almost want other people to experience in them just because it's such a such an isolated feeling that i don't know maybe i just want everyone to feel terrified at least once in their life <laughs> so when when you saw the hat man w- mm. did he make any <clears throat> sounds or any smells or anything like that no um i remember i remember once for a, a couple of days or or I would smell perfume in when I'd sleep on on the couch in the living room, mm-hmm. and I thought maybe it, that was related. And I'd ask my mom, and she was like, "Yeah, I smell that sometimes." I'm like, "Cool, oh. that's not something to be terrified of." Um, <laughs> but no, he never. I never smelt anything or, or heard any sounds. The and like I said, the only movement I ever saw was he took a step back and just melt or not melted but just phased almost through the door Mm -hmm. that was the only time i ever saw him move or or do anything but yeah it just terrified me with the the pocket watch thing because i started thinking i must have had something to drink because i was like man maybe i'm running out of time (laughs) like maybe this is a message um but yeah did did yours um have any aroma nope not that I recall. Um, didn't make any sound other than me being able to hear my heartbeat because <laughs> I was terrified. But uh, no, and, and mine didn't have a pocket watch either. Oh, did he have a Casio wristwatch? <laughs> Perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> but no, like, uh, there's, I mean, you, you, you've probably looked into research way more than I have. I guess everything has an origin. But what's so crazy is because normally it's, it's like, oh, that person died in that place. So that's why they're there or that place meant something to them. Yeah. But why is this dude everywhere? I, yeah, I know. I, I haven't really done a lot of research on him, um, and which is kind of weird. You'd think I would because I've had encounters myself and I've heard of other people having it. And, well, I'm curious. And, yeah, but I, I never uh, – I, I should start – doing some research because it really I've like I said I never saw him again after we left the apartment building but he's never Hmm. left my thoughts um he's haunted my memory not to the point where I was scared it's just he's I've always thought of him over the years wondering you know wonder why I haven't seen him anymore I'm thankful I haven't seen him anymore Um, yeah you know and then like I said once I started hearing about other people with encounters the first time that I heard, well, when I heard it on the Paratooth radio, I had the same reaction as you. It was like, oh, my God, other people have seen him, too. Yeah. It is it is weird. I remember, like, every now and then, if I can't sleep, um, you and your gaze just randomly gets drawn to different parts <clears throat> of the room. <clears throat> He's the first thing that pops into my head. Really? Yeah. It's not, okay, maybe you're just super tired or you're remembering if you put your keys in your bag. I instantly just think, oh, almost like an ex-lover. Like, I wonder what they're up to. <laughs> so they still think about me? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's hope that uh, the hat man doesn't get that close and personal with you. <laughs> yeah, it would definitely be uh, podcast worthy, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to come back and tell us about it if it does. It would be a horrible thing to explain to someone, like, why are you so tired at work today? Well, this guy. He kept me up all night. <laughs> and he wanted to spoon afterwards. It was a whole ordeal. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so has your I wife kept, ever... What's that? I was going to say, I, I kept offering him an Uber. But... <laughs> oh, man. Did your wife, when you were dating, because you said she didn't want to stay longer than, what, 10 o'clock, has she ever seen him? Or you just she, told her about it? I told her about it. When um when you and I discussed uh, me coming on here, I was mm-hmm. I was telling telling her about it. And she was like, oh, cool, what are you going to talk about? And I started explaining it. And she was like, no, not tonight. Not tonight. Oh. So, but she's had, she's had weird things. Like, um, she, she once said that, uh, she could feel someone sitting on the end of her bed mm-hmm. and she for some reason instantly started thinking of of her aunt and hmm. I believe it was her aunt and then she 
she spoke to her parents and they were like, yeah, they passed last night. Wow. So that's the only thing that she's had, but, well, that she'll tell me about. Um, yeah. But no, Hat, Hat Man doesn't get discussed in the house. Yeah. I don't, mm, but, I don't blame her. <laughs> but um, my, my sister uh, had a, a kid a few months ago. Oh, and congratulations. They, thank you. I'm an uncle. Yes. Um, and they sleep in the room where I most saw him. So I'm really curious if, oh. if, if he would appear again or, yeah. or what. That's interesting. If ever you find out, let me know. Yeah, because again, I could I could be a Ghostbusters two situation. Oh, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we could go ghostbusting together. <laughs> well, of course, we're a big ghostbusting family. But, You've got the Ghostbusters yeah. mug. I have Ghostbuster fuzzy pants. <laughs> <laughs> They're my favorite comfy pants in the house. <laughs> well, I guess you may have heard on the podcast. I often reference. I have. Mm. A Ecto One Lego um, that sits on my desk when I, I podcast. Don't, I don't remember that. I listened to your show. Oh, I, yeah, it was a quick quiz. Uh, you passed, <laughs> uh, but I, I'll look at it whenever Alex is talking about something nonsensical, <laughs> and just think, I wish I was a Ghostbuster. <laughs> but that's what I, that's would what, you go, go after you? No, no, go ahead. I was just going to ask, like have you ever gone on like a haunted tour or anything? Do you ever go looking for the spirits? Yeah. I'm a paranormal investigator as well. Oh, how yeah. so many questions. <laughs> I'm going to start with, how are you not afraid? I don't know. I think my curiosity trumps the fear. Um, not to say that I've never been afraid. Uh, I have, but yeah, my curiosity is just, um, it's, it's fa I want to know what they are mm. and why they're there and why some people can see and feel them and other people can't. So I don't know. It's just more intriguing for me. Ah, oh, it's interesting. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Would I'd be able to. No, I, I don't think I could. No? I would <laughs> just be like, no, we're, we're okay. Um, I, I get a little bit worried watching Most Haunted, like those TV mm -hmm. shows, yeah. even though I know, or I think most of them are fake. I still get a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Some some of them, I, before I started investigating, I used to watch them all the time. And now I can't because cause I'll be yelling at the TV, that's not how it's done. <laughs> or or someone, it is, it is pretty close though, but it is for entertainment. So I think they do um, embellish on some things, but you know, because hmm. they want to get the, the, the watchers, you know, the viewers attention and, and interest. But um, sometimes I hate it when the camera is on the, the individual and they say, did you see that? No, yeah. the camera was on you. <laughs> like, oh. So my daughter, she's, you know, she'll be watching the shows. And she says, mother, you need to leave the room now because I can't enjoy my show. Fine. <laughs> That's fair. Have a, have your kids ever like shown an interest in in going? My daughter that way. My daughter, she's eighteen, but I won't let her. I don't think she's ready, and my husband doesn't want her to go. So, um, it, it kind of makes him feel uncomfortable. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I, it's weird. I I feel like it's a it's a Pandora's box because it's it's something you could never shake again. It's something that feeling will always be there, and. Yeah, I don't think I think it's it'd be very tricky to to ever forget any of those feelings. Yeah. I'm Maybe. just rambling at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Ramble away. Okay, so um there's this thing called democracy and uh, <laughs> <laughs> So have you had any experiences in any other locations or workplaces, you know, other than the hotel? Uh no, I had one uh, in the same hotel, it was always this, but it was a very tight corridor and you'd take, you'd walk down two steps and you'd walk maybe five yards and then walk up another two steps. Mm -hmm. And I remember when you'd go into that area, you would feel pressure, like you were being crushed. Mm -hmm. So that was the only other thing. And I remember I would run through that area screaming. Um, but yeah, that was, I think the one that, 
but with that you really have to you have to be asked the question it's not something that will just pop into your mind randomly mm-hmm. but but hat man like you say would just randomly yeah just be like huh yeah that was a that was a thing <laughs> yeah like i i was watching hbo the other day and they showed an advert for what's coming up and they, i think they showed a clip for deadwood and oh, i'm like pocket show. watch awesome oh <laughs> so do you have perhaps a little fear of pocket watches now <laughs> yeah pocket watches capes and top hats oh so, <laughs> lovely yeah i'm um, I hope we never go back to the steampunk era. <laughs> Just keep moving forward. <laughs> so you, your hat man had a, a cloak, you think, or trench coat, or I, I think more of a, of a cloak. Mm-hmm. I guess with the, the when I think about it, I <clears throat> I'd like to think he had a Jack the Ripper esque, like style going on. Like he would go home and look at his pictures and be like, I want to dress like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess that's, that's instantly what, what I'm, what I imagine just a, a cape and almost like he's coming back from a good time. <laughs> Not that Jack the Ripper was having a, <laughs> never mind. We, we move on. That's a whole different show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. I just, uh, it's so fascinating because this is one of the reasons why I wanted to start this podcast because, as you know, when people have experiences, a lot of times they don't want to say anything to the family or friends because they're going to look at them like they're crazy. So they keep it to themselves yeah. and then it can be really, really stressful. So if someone actually hears of other people having encounters, like you and I, when we heard that other people saw the hat man, we're like, holy crap, you know, maybe I'm not crazy. Or maybe everybody just is crazy. I don't know. But um, it's I just love this, how everybody can be connected by listening to a show and saying, hey, yeah, I've had the, that experience too. Mm. And it's, like you say, it, weirdly enough, it's like one of the, the few taboos left to talk about. Yeah. And um, I was telling Alex about it. And, and he was just like, cool. Sounds nice. <laughs> so anyway, on today's podcast, I'm like, but dude, I'm telling you. There was this guy, and he's like, yeah, all right then. So I want to talk about this today. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not only just about you. It's about me too. <laughs> Let me talk. Now, when he listens to this, <laughs> that's, that's going to hurt him. So my, my mission today has been is completed. Oh, we love you, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> You're so mean. No. <laughs> It, it comes from a place of love. Oh, um, oh, okay. Yeah. You're mean because you care. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm an old Disney character that lives in the cabin. <laughs> Just wanting to, uh, a young Ron Swanson, I believe. Ron Swanson. I don't know that name. Have you not seen Parks and Rec? No. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Can we like, no longer you, talk now or, or, or are, you, are we okay? You, You've just lost a subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. It was just a, it was a, a TV show. This guy was very cranky. He worked for a, like a government agency. Agency? Department. Department. Hmm. No. Is that still on or? No. It got canceled by it. I think it got canceled. It, it's not on anymore. I... There you go. I've, I've grown in confidence now. My scatterbrain is, is fully fledged. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so now that uh, we've spoken about your, your experiences, why don't you tell us about your podcast now? Ah, that was a, that's a mighty fine segue. Um, it's a mighty fine show. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do a podcast with, with my friend Alex uh, we, we bonded over video games and I live in New York. He lives in somewhere in England. Um, he, he has told me, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we, we would stay in touch by playing video games. So he said, let's start a podcast. So I do that with him and, and yeah, he, he has the, he has a structure for every episode 
and I go out of my way to stop that structure. <laughs> and yeah, uh, and then on the side, I have a, a side podcast called An Englishman's Guide to Being a Better American. Where I haven't I actually interview- listened to that one yet. Oh, you're not missing anything. It doesn't get good until the fourth episode. Uh, happens during a hostage negotiation. I'm like, where do you think you're going wrong? Um, yeah, and, and I just talk to people I've met in, in America, and we discuss how I can become the greatest American of all time. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. That's my, my talking job. Oh, and you didn't mention the name of uh, the show that you have with Alex. Through choice. Um, it's called uh, Cap'n and the Meerkat. You guys have to check it out. It really is. I love how you guys, just the chemistry you guys have. And like, like I've told you guys so many times, you crack me up. You're so funny. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's now, now feels like a slight pressure every week to try and include Batman. <laughs> oh, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and and the the crazy thing is we we have a, an imaginary moose on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a podcast, so you can obviously only use your ears, and he doesn't make a sound. So <laughs> it's this. It was a weird throwaway joke that has now taken up way too much of my thinking during the week of <laughs> what has Devon been up to, <laughs> and scribbling some idea down but we're we're working on a an episode devoted to imaginary moose oh nice (laughs) yeah um where he goes gets lost (laughs) maybe maybe he comes to canada maybe he has well if you want to if you want to stop by and do a voice we're like (laughs) more than welcome i know um i know anthony is has thrown his hat in the ring to voice a, a cockroach that lives on on the moose. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." That's awesome. Sounds great. Hey, we could start a comic book or something, a little cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think um, I think you you were right. We should also have a, a podcast with all of our mascots, yeah, all the animals. It would just be chaos, and they, they could have discussions and. There'd be moose poop everywhere. And <laughs> the weirdest thing is, Alex will say to me, how, how do you think Devin sounds? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, I, I imagine he sounds like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> and, and he's very heavily into Taoism. <laughs> really? Yeah. But that's, he was telling me the other day, he was like, bro, you need the darkness to illuminate the candle. I was like, that's deep. <laughs> Got to work now. Um, have a good day. <laughs> Try not to trample the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us where uh, where you can find your shows? Ah, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, you can find us on Anchor, iTunes, uh, Google Play, and Spotify just by typing in uh, Cap'n and the Meerkat. And that's C A P P A N. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then and the and then Mika. M E E R K A T. Nice. And I'll yeah, also I can spell. I'm so proud. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that Batman? <laughs> I can spell. <laughs> but he can't. He can't. He can't do anything. He's he's in the corner right now, sulking. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost my train. I thought I was going to say something. My my train just derailed. Um, now you know how Alex feels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Alex. Not here to defend himself. I just meant with his structure. But <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to throw him under a bus. <laughs> no, I'll, um, I remember what I was going to say now. I'm, I'll add the links to your podcast on the show notes when this episode gets released so people can find you. Yeah, and then they can reach out to us on Twitter and say to them and ask us why they wasted 30 minutes of their day. And I'll be like, well, you're welcome. It's not you just crazy. gave us seven cents. <laughs> hey, seven cents is seven cents. It's true. I've been saying this to to Alex. He he wants to cash out now and retire. And I'm like, <laughs> no, we should keep going. Let's try and get to a dollar. <laughs> 
How does that work if it's seven cents? We're not good with maths um, <laughs> at the Obviously. show. I, I think I think that has come across um, numerous times. It's yeah. I I, I always struggle British to come conversion, up with the British conversion, right? The British conversion. Oh well, with Brexit, <laughs> se- <laughs> with Brexit, I think seven cents is about two million. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to retiring in in England. So Just that's, watching everything burn, I guess. So. <laughs> so that's why you're going back to England for for a visit soon, right? You're going to cash in. Yeah, I'm going to cash in <laughs> with one of those big novelty checks. Yeah, I'm going to be like, I want that house. Like, that's Buckingham Palace, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I want it. Bat- Batman, get my suitcase. <laughs> you see the Queen walking down the street with her corgi. Ah, oh, bless. <laughs> Hello, Scott. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do a queen voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I think she sounds like, oh, yes, the queen. <laughs> She's very, very hunched. She's like, no, Charles, you'll never be king. <laughs> My parents and I were watching years ago uh, some kind of a derby or something that the royal the royalty were watching, and they're in their, their little box watching it. And that's when the queen mom was still alive. <laughs> and it was so funny. Uh, the queen looked at the queen mum and actually looked at her and said, "Mummy," and was like, "Oh, oh my God!" She called him. Her, she called her mother, "Mommy." It's like I couldn't believe it. we we were howling. It's like she's really a person too, like everyone else. I think I think she's <laughs> having her in in England is great, uh, especially for Sesame Street, because she's a walking advertisement for something small felt and kind of like wobbles. <laughs> So. Yeah, there's wobbles, but they don't fall down. <laughs> what's the what's the letter today, Queen? Hey, <laughs> awesome! Oh, you and your voices. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, they 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 all blend into the same thing. <laughs> awesome. Well, Scott, we're at the end. Oh no, the end. I know. As you know from my podcast, I don't know how to sign off, so I'll just say thank you for having me. Well, I, I, I like the way you sign off because sometimes I don't I, – I say this is the end, but it really isn't. I just keep going. <laughs> so oh, like I us. I think we, record, we recorded today and we just rambled and rambled and Alex was like, dude, we, we've said goodbye three times. I'm like, <laughs> oh, just leave it on. <laughs> Anything you'd like to add before we sign off? Uh, keep doing uh, this podcast because I really enjoy it. And Thanks. it's awesome to, to hear the stories and, and the interviews you have. And maybe, because my lucky number is 27, I can come back on episode 27 and discuss skinwalkers. Ooh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to burn a lot of sage in order to do that and surround my house in salt. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I'll just listen. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much for being on here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You take care. You too. Bye-bye. Well, we've made it to the end of another episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, take care of each other. And if you'd like to be on the show or have questions or comments, just drop me an email, paranormalheart13 at gmail.com. Paranormal Heart would like to extend a special thank you to purpleplanet.com for supplying the music for the show. The views and opinions expressed on Paranormal Heart are those of the host and participants. 